Happy sunshine, family. Welcome back to the Lunacy Channel. I'm here on September 21st, 2017, and we're taking another look at the radar images just to document what we've got. Um, this is my seventh take, number seven, of this video because OBS Studio is misbehaving. Um, even though I've got my sources set up properly, and I can tell that on this screen things are moving. I'm going to press play on the IntelliCast feed. We'll see if that starts moving. It looks like that's going to be working all right. I'm going to let that refresh for just a second. And I've got a preview window so I know what should be recorded right now. Okay. It appears that everything is working all right. Yes, yeah, it's been a very frustrating morning. Uh, OBS has been... E each one of these little squares that, that you see in the window here, like uh, DG's bed, the IntelliCast site, and then this composite loop, uh, you have to tell OBS Studio what they are. And those are called sources. And it appears that when I'm in the middle of recording uh, and I take one source, which will be the IntelliCast browser, uh, strange things are going on and it'll switch it over to my desktop as the source and I won't be recording the window. And I didn't make that change. I don't know what's going on or what explains that. But the seventh time is a charm, Grace, and this video is going to be uh, exactly what I need it to be to document some interesting observations that we're finding on these two maps here. So let's first switch to the IntelliCast site. All right, and it appears that this is working great. Um, I'd like to point out that we can see in the NASA cloud images here, and I'm going to pause it right there, we see a lot of lines in the clouds and these ripples uh, those are indicative to me of some sort of electromagnetic manipulation of the cloud mass and I wanted to point that out. Uh, the other thing that will be important later is just note that the general track of this moisture in here is from the southwest to the northeast. All right, we're going to sweep across the country here and take a look at Hurricane Jose, or the storm that they say is Hurricane Jose. My computer's been a little bit slow. I don't know why. There we go. So again, the radar does not match anything close to the shape of the clouds that NASA has given us. This semicircular arc of wet weather here looks like it is static. It hasn't moved. It's just staying right there off of the coast. Now, as I move the map around, you'll see that always in the center of the map, we've got this little white cross indicator. And if I move any position of the map right underneath of that indicator, what I'll get is <clears throat> some information uh, somewhere near there geographically. And so I'm going to move this indicator up here just off Massachusetts and Rhode Island. And we're going to take a look at what nearby weather stations are reporting for the current conditions. Now right now it is 1427 or 227 p.m. on the Pacific Coast. So here at 5.19 p.m. Eastern Time, so these are very, very current. These are just minutes old. 
Edgartown, Massachusetts. The winds are 29 miles an hour. Woods Hole, 29 miles an hour. Cuddy Hunk, 29 miles an hour. North Shoreham, Rhode Island, 24 miles an hour. All right, now we're going to head south and take a look at what's going on with Maria. And again, I apologize that my computer is so slow right now. It's usually much faster. But we've definitely got some interesting observations to make down here around the Dominican Republic with respect to Hurricane Maria. Okay, there, she's coming into view now. So this is, I, I really love the way the True Channel refers to the satellite image from NASA as the NASA cartoonery. Uh, the word cartoonery just really flows right off of my tongue. <clears throat> so we can see that the eye is just to the north of the Dominican Republic. And I'm going to turn it on, so just the radar. So we don't have anything on radar, guys. This storm uh, apparently ravaged Puerto Rico yesterday. And if we come right on over to the coast here, we've got that indicator right on the northern coast of the Dominican Republic. We got Rio San Juan at 5 p.m. So these are very current. These are about a half hour old. The, 79 degrees, winds are 23 miles an hour. Caborete, 23 miles an hour at 5 p.m. Nagua, 23 miles an hour at 5 p.m. Samana, 14 miles an hour at 5 p.m. Monte Cristi, 17 miles an hour at 5 p.m. Luperon, 23 miles an hour, 5 p.m. And light rain, just light rain there. There's moderate rain in Monte Cristi. Light rain in Sosua. Cabarete is rain showers. So there's, there's some stormy weather there, guys. But this does not feel like these instruments reporting 23 mile an hour winds are this close to the eye of a hurricane that is as strong as they say Maria is. Look, there is weather that's showing up on the reflective radar that's just on some of these nearby islands, but none of that reflectivity is being picked up of Maria. There are multiple radar stations on these land masses, guys. We should be seeing something, and the fact that we're not makes me wonder if we're in an information blackout. We can come back over here towards Puerto Rico. And now look, we're getting 10 miles an hour in Puerto Rico, 10 miles an hour. Like yesterday, all of these were down. They weren't reporting. And, and now they're back up, 10 miles an hour. This is very strange, guys. I mean, they're still within the bands of of this storm i i find it hard to believe that the wind speeds right here are 10 miles an hour if there's a hurricane we got 23 miles an hour over here this doesn't feel like a hurricane guys all right now we're going to switch over to the composite radar feed yeah and we've got some really interesting things going on here first I'd like to direct your attention to this storm mass that's in Nevada Utah Idaho kinda of crossing Wyoming and going into Montana look at the flow of all of this weather it is from the southwest to the northeast now, last night, we saw that this line of storms was angled more east and west, and today it's more north and south. 
and that the direction of travel of this moisture going from the southwest to the northeast is just about exactly opposite, almost 180 degrees opposite from the general trajectory of the eastern storms here in North Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, South Carolina, kind of coming into the northern parts of Alabama and Georgia. All of these weather systems are moving from the northeast to the southwest. They're coming down like this. Over here on the west side, we've got the weather moving this way. Exactly opposite. It's like, it's like we're on a weather highway here. We got traffic traveling this way and traffic traveling this way and we, we must have a center divider or a median or somewhere in here. Now, I'd like to show you this. This is the video I put up last night documenting the radar uh, from around midnight. Look at this band of radar that is firing right in the middle of the country from basically the upper peninsula of Michigan all the way down through Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, we got the northern part of Illinois, and then down here in the Nebraska and Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and even into New Mexico. Look at the angle of this. This is almost the exact same direction or angle that today, 14 hours later, this east coast storms are moving to the southwest, the west coast storms are moving to the northeast and we can see a much steeper angle here you know these storms are in California right around that little corner where the puzzle piece of well let me back that up a bit right where the puzzle piece of Nevada fits into California right at that corner and you can see that this line of storms appears to be swinging like a gate and it appears to be lining up so that it's in the same orientation as this coordinated firing of radar. And then we'll pause that and then come over here and we can see now today this whole line is more north-south. It's more in line with that band of radar that fired 12 hours ago. Interesting that that band of radar does appear to be the center median strip because we've got weather moving to the northeast in one side of the country and to the southwest and the other side, almost exactly opposite. And I'm putting all of these observations together and I'm wondering if that's what's going on. It's pretty blatant to say or to see that the radar was fired last night in a coordinated fashion. Look at that. Bam, right across the middle of the country. And then as this was firing, the angle, the compass directions of the alignment of this wall of storms here came to be a closer alignment or more in alignment to this band of radars and that the flow is exactly opposite on each side of it. Those are pretty blatant observations to me, and I would love to hear your thoughts. And speaking of hearing your thoughts, guys, it is so apparent that there's just a lot of intelligent, articulate, and observant people in the Lunacy family. And I want to thank them for all of their email, their love, the light, the links, and the comments. And I would really look forward to seeing some of your information uh, in your own videos. Uh, it's evident that the experience of someone who's been in the legal system in a different capacity, like say maybe a lawyer or a clerk, is going to pick up on different things than a retired cop would, which is the lens that I look at this case through. I was listening to an interview from a flight attendant, and this was concerning 9-11. I think it's an old coast-to-coast -coast with the George Norrie episode. 
And it was really evident by listening to her talk and give her light through the lens of being a flight attendant of all the things that didn't make sense with 9-11. And watching your comments and your emails come in, guys, I am in a position to make an interesting observation that we all have experience that we can use as lenses when we look at the current events going on. And it might feel like it's hidden to you in this now moment, but something is going to come up and you're going to see it differently than the rest of the crowd, and it's going to be so easy for you to articulate what you see, how you see it, and why you see it the way you do. And that's your love, and that's your light, that your divine journey has brought you to experience and give to the rest of humanity. So that's what I feel as I'm doing these videos, and I can see the endless potential for everyone else to be doing the same thing with their own lens of experiences, decoding the reality that is around us and the deceptions that are around us. So thank you so much. Keep all of that love, light, and links coming. If you got email for me, send it to lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E -E, at protonmail.com. I love you guys a lot, and we'll be back really soon. Bye-bye.